Hey guys, what's up? This is Elias with the Yes Do It team from the Costa Rican jungle. Today we're going to show you how to get a website running for your business within freaking minutes. So stay tuned and get your tools ready. You're going to need your laptop computer and you're going to need an internet connection and a stable one, please. So if you have two of them ready, let's just jump into it. Awesome, now that you're ready, we'll make this as quick and easy as possible. Even if you're not related to the tech industry, you'll be able to understand every single concept in this video because of the way I put it. To get this done, we're going to go through three different processes. First, we're going to give your hosting account a brain. Second, we're going to give that brain memory, so it doesn't suffer from CRS like all of us. And last but not least, we're going to give that brain a sexy body. Before we start, we have a choice to make, and that is whether to use open source software or commercial use software. In other words, to pay for shit or not to pay for shit. Now in this step, it's very important for me to clarify a little something regarding open source software. Free software does not mean crappy software. No, 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 no. It just means they have a different business model. With that being said, we're going to be using the longtime legend and open source content management system. Now every system, every machine, every device needs a brain to work properly. And in this case, WordPress will be your right hand doing all of the hard work for you. So go ahead and log in into your cPanel. And once you're in, click on File Manager. Now when you do, that will open up a separate tab with a list of files and folders located within the server. Now look for public HTML and double click on it. Make sure that it's an empty directory. Please open up a new tab and type in your website's address. Right now you should be seeing a white screen like this one. But don't worry cause you're with the good guys and we're about to fix this shit. Now go on to your browser search bar and type in WordPress download. Click on the first result. Now click on that beautiful download button and get yourself a free copy. Go back to the file manager and inside the public HTML folder, go ahead and upload the zip file that you just downloaded. Two very boring minutes later. Now this next step, it's a little bit tricky. Now that we have the zip file inside the public HTML folder, we're going to extract it. It'll come up with a screen like this one, showing all of the contents it just dumped. This process will leave you with a new folder inside the public HTML called WordPress. Go into it, and using the navigation tools, select all of the files and folders in it. Once you have them all selected, go ahead and click on Move. Now the next step is super important. The system is asking where do you want to move these files. Make sure you delete WordPress from the input and click move. Now click go up one level and you'll find the whole WordPress folder structure for your site. The next thing you need to do is go to the tab that you previously opened with your website and hit the refresh button. Then guess what? Now that we have WordPress set up, let's go ahead and select our preferred language and click continue. A screen like this one will come up requesting some database information. Now you see that let's go button down there, click on it. Now this is where our second player comes in handy because we need to create a database and have a username associated with it. To do so, let's go back to the cPanel and look for MySQL. Click on the first link showing up and type in a name for the database you're about to create. Now select and copy that name and paste it into the database name field. Now let's go back to the cPanel tab and look for MySQL users. Now the same concept goes on here, type in a name and a password for the user you're about to create. And one last time go ahead and copy that information to paste it in your database connection details. And for the database host and table prefix, let's just keep the default value. Now for the last step regarding the database connection details, we're going to go back to cPanel and look for add user to database. Select both the user and the database that you have just created and click add. That'll display a screen just like this one showing all of the user's rights within that database. Hit the check mark for all privileges and click on make changes. Now that we have that done, we can go back to the WordPress configuration and click on submit. If the information you enter was correct, you can now feel pretty fucking proud of yourself. Cause we just gave your website's brain a whole lot of memory to store our data in. 
Now for the fun part of it, you're going to need to baptize your website with a name. After that, set yourself up with a username. Now because our website is still in a development stage, I'm gonna go down here and hit the check mark to discourage search engines from indexing this site. And that way when people search for it, it won't just yet show up on Google. Gula gula! Now click on install and log in with the information that you have just entered. Once you're in, look for the plugins menu in the left sidebar and click on add new. Go to the search bar and type in Elementor Starter Templates and look for this fucking awesome plugin created by Brainstorm Force. Hit the install now button and then activate. Now go to the left menu, look for appearance and click on starter templates. You will then be asked to select your page builder. The system will now show you a huge list of templates to choose from. Now go up to the top, click on that all button and then filter the template list however you like. And I want you guys to scroll down the list looking for the perfect template for the website that you guys are currently working on. Now when you do find that template that fits perfect for your project, go ahead and click on the preview to open it up. Then select the option import complete site. And oh my god we're about to finish! That'll open up a pop up like this one. Make sure to always hit on that check mark to delete the previously imported site and then just click on that import button. Now relax a little bit, smoke that tree, crack that brew and reclaim your chair a little bit cause this is gonna take a while and we're about to get our paycheck. And there it is, you now have a professional looking website with all of the sections and options that you need to get your business to the next level. We know this is a lot of information to take, so you can replay this video as many times as you want. However, if you'd like to go through this tutorial in a text format, then go to this video's description and click on the link for us to send you a PDF file with all of the information in this video step by step. Oh by the way guys, you see that horrible not secure message in the top bar? We're gonna get rid of it in the next video, so subscribe!